Welcome back to another edition of CCS and Sons Workshop. I've got a brand new flannel on for you today and I'm going to show you how you use these two pocket hole systems made by Craig. The K5 system and the HD pocket hole system. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're going to start this discussion focusing on the K5 jig and then we'll do the HD pocket hole jig afterwards. Um, the primary differences are the K5 jig will do material thicknesses all the way up to one and a half inches thick. The K5 jig can do material as thin as one half an inch and as I said, all the way up to one and a half inches thick. Um, it, the K5 jig comes with these two um, arms that are material support. If you had a wide board in here that you wanted a pocket hole, for the purposes of our demonstration today, I'm going to take these off just so that I can turn this thing around and show you how it works better. So the very first step in the process is measuring the thickness of the material that you're going to be pocket holing. And for today's demonstration, I'm going to pretend that we're making a drawer out of this material. Um, and so we would be pocket holing like that, as if this was a drawer. The pocket hole will go into this material so that the screws will bite into this drawer face. That's our make-believe project for today. So, you need to determine the thickness of your material. This material happens to be 5 eighths of an inch. So that's what all the settings are going to be based on. Whenever you're doing pocket holes, all of the settings on the jig have to be set for that specific project and that specific material thickness. So once you know your material thickness, you set the material depth. You pull this pin out right here, and this uh, depth adjustment moves. So you find your increment of your material thickness, and you set it accordingly. So we're doing 5 eighths of an inch, so we set it there. After you have the depth setting set, for your material thickness, you use a chart that comes in the manual that tells you what screw length to use for what thickness of material. So you follow down on the chart, here's 5 eighths material thickness, we're going to use a 1 inch screw, and we set the jig at the 5 eighths setting as I showed you on the first step. So there's lots of different size screws and coarseness of screws that you can buy for this. This is just a starter kit um, that you can get at pretty much any hardware store or online. I'm going to include a link in the description where you can get all of these different jigs and the screw kits from Amazon if you're interested. Um, but so in the starter kit it comes with one and a half inch screws, two and a half inch, one and a quarter, one and a quarter in uh, different coarseness, two and a half and one inch. And there are coarse and there are fine thread screws uh, available for the Craig jig. In general, you want to use the fine thread screws for the hardwoods and the coarse thread screws for your softwoods. So this is a softwood we're going to be using a one inch screw and it's a coarse thread because it's a soft wood. So again, you use your chart and you find the screw that corresponds with your length and your material thickness and you set it aside. Again, you'll want to keep this chart that comes in the manual um, but because uh, that tells you what screw length and what setting to use for your uh, specific material thickness. So we've got our screw, we've got our depth set accordingly to the material thickness, uh, and the next step is to 
adjust the stop collar on the bit that comes with the jig. And the way you do that is by taking this um, step indicator and you put it right down here in front of where the pocket holes exit so that the bit comes down and hits it. And then again you pull out the manual to see what the settings are. Uh, we're using the standard bit and we are at 5 8 material thickness using a 1 inch screw so we want the bit to stop on the 1 inch stop block step. And I'll try to get you a better angle of that, what that looks like. So you can see on here that there are multiple different screw length settings and depth on the steps. So when it says we're doing the one inch step, that's going to be this step right here. So we're going to put that under the bit. And you want it so that the bit shoulder rests on the top of that stop block. Once you have that, for your specific settings, then you tighten the collar on the bit. So I'll tighten that now. Uh, also, it's worth noting that these extension shelves that fit on here, they're little cubbies for all your specific tools, your Allen wrenches, uh, your drivers, pieces like that, instructions you could put in there. comes in very handy. Okay, so once we have the depth set on the um, drill bit, then we tighten the stop collar. And then you are almost ready to drill your first pocket hole. You double check um, to make sure that your bit is not going to bite into your jig, otherwise you did something wrong there. Okay, then the next step is going to be adjusting this clamp assembly. Uh, and the way this works is you pull this lever down and it pulls the clamp and your workpiece tight against the jig. So you want to adjust it. You want to adjust it so that it pulls tight when you pull down on the lever. Right now there's way too much play in there. So while the lever's up, you push down here and you slide this forward to get pretty close and then you use this lever for the rest of the pressure. That's probably it. Uh, that's pretty tight right there. So that's good. Now you're ready to drill pocket holes. Um, you'll notice that there's three different holes in here for your bits or for your drill bit and that's um, used in, depending on what kind of the width of your material so if you were using a relatively thinner stock and you wanted to have two pocket holes you could use these two next to each other um, but for in this instance I've got a wider piece of material so I'm going to use these two outer holes so we've got everything set we've got our depth set We've got our drill bit with the stop collar set, and we've got the material clamped in place. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of pocket holes, you may want to screw this entire jig down to a piece of wood, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more sturdy. Let's go ahead and drill two pocket holes right here. It's also worth noting that there's a vacuum port on here. It really works well. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to take it off just so you can see better how this works, how the bit goes down through there and the shavings will exit those holes. But this really is a lifesaver. Um, if you're doing a lot of pocket holes, definitely put this on and just hook it up to your shop back. OK, 
Okay, release the clamp, pull it out, and there's your two pocket holes. The jig comes with the, an extension driver so that you can get at these angles to get down in there uh, depending on how you're working uh, these extension drivers are critical. So you line up your material and again using uh, the chart remember to use the right screw and the right coarseness threads we're using one inch screws. You'll notice that down inside the pocket holes if you can see that there is a shoulder um, for these screws and these screws essentially have uh, basically built-in washers to help prevent tear out through the bottom of the material but you can still tear these out so use caution when you're doing this for the first time do it on some test pieces um, just to make sure you don't pull it out the other end of the material so I just go ahead and drop these in the hole I'm just lining this up flush with my finger on the back for now. And there you go, your first piece of pocket hole joined furniture. That drawer is really going to look nice. So that's the basics of the K5 jig. And now we'll demonstrate and talk about the heavy duty jig. Okay, so the other jig that comes in really handy for material uh, one and a half inches and larger in thickness is the Craig HD jig. And this is a much simpler, this is a standalone jig um, that's taller, thicker, beefier, all around um, meant for thicker material and thicker screws. It comes with uh, an even bigger bit and it's meant to go with even bigger screws. These are two and a half inch screws and they're the coarse thread. There's really only one setting for this and that is when you put the bit in you want it to stop three-eighths of an inch from the base of the jig. That's your only setting. So you set that stop collar um, and that's it. It's all set for one and a half inch material or thicker. The other thing to note is that this jig does not come with a clamp. And if you're going to be using this by itself, you're going to want a clamp. On that note, this can be used in the K5 system. You can remove the depth gauge that comes in the K5 and you can take this stop block off and you can put this in here. And you want to make sure you move your clamp settings sufficient but so if you have both you can put the HD jig into the K5 system so that you have the clamping power built in without needing a separate clamp. So for demonstration purposes we're going to pretend we don't have the K5 system and we'll demonstrate this just using a clamp. So we'll put the stop block back on so for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to pretend that we're building a workbench or similar project with 2x4s that we want to pocket hole into another 2x4. So we're going to put pocket holes on the end of this material to go into this material. So you take your jig, make sure you orient it so that the uh, drill bit is coming out of the back side, lay it on your material. And this is where that external clamp comes in. These are made so that this end of the clamp fits perfectly inside of the jig. Uh, 
Uh, you tighten it accordingly, make some adjustments. Get the stop block at the end of the material and you clamp it down. You're now ready to drill your pocket holes. So we're going to remember to switch out our drill bit from the smaller one to the bigger HD bit. Get this bad boy on here. And you're ready to drill your pocket holes. Unclamp it, and there's your pocket holes, extra large style. So let's go ahead and connect it to the material. Also worth noting that the driver bit for the K5 system is a number two driver. number two driver and the HD pocket hole kit comes with an even larger driver a number three driver which fits the HD two and a half inch extra large heavy duty screws so make sure you switch out that driver otherwise you're gonna have a hard time And there you have extra beefy, super stout 2x4 connection. So I hope that was helpful to see the differences between the K5 system and the HD pocket hole jig uh, and how you set and use them. If you've got questions, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to have a thumbs up from you. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode of CCS and Sons Workshop.